So today we are going to start a new series of lectures about the veins and their functions. We are also going to discuss the pressures in the inside the veins and the factors which are going to increase or decrease the pressure inside the veins. So the first topic to discuss about the veins is the central venous pressure CVP or the right atrial pressure. So what basically is the CVP central venous pressure or the right atrial pressure? It's simply the pressure in the right atrium of the heart. The CVP central venous pressure or the right atrial pressure is simply the pressure in the right atrium of the heart. We have discussed again and again that the blood vessels basically bring the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium of the heart. The blood from the right atrium of the heart goes into the right ventricle, from the right ventricle it goes into the lungs, from the lungs it comes back as oxygenated blood into the left atrium, from the left atrium it goes into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it goes again into the human body and returns back to the heart with the help of veins. So blood is basically going through the arteries and then it is coming back through the veins. We have discussed the arteries, their functions and the arterial pressure. Now it's the turn to discuss the veins and their functions. So blood from all the systemic veins flows into the right atrium. So pressure in the right atrium is called central venous pressure. All the blood, all the blood from the limbs and the viscera of the human body basically returns back to the right atrium. So pressure in the right atrium is called central venous pressure. Now, central venous pressure, why is it important to discuss central venous pressure? Central venous pressure is important to discuss because by measuring the central venous pressure, we can, uh, we can diagnose a lot of diseases and then accordingly we can treat a lot of diseases as well. So basically the central venous pressure is regulated by the ability of the heart to pump the blood and tendency for the blood to flow from the peripheral veins. So there are two basic things which will regulate the central venous pressure. The first is the ability of the heart to pump. So basically the pumping of the heart is one factor which will regulate the central venous pressure or the CVP. And the second thing is tendency for the blood to flow from the peripheral veins. The second factor which will determine the central venous pressure is the ability or the tendency of the blood to come back here. Now see the pumping and the flow of blood are two main mechanisms which will determine the central venous pressure. Now the tendency for blood to flow is still affected or regulated by three important factors. The, the tendency for blood, the tendency of blood to come back here from the peripheral veins to the right atrium is affected by three main factors. First of them is the increased blood volume. If the blood volume is increased or decreased, the, 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 the ability or the tendency of the blood to, to come towards the right atrium will increase. So the volume, the blood volume, it's one factor. It is going to increase the tendency towards the heart, towards the right atrium. So the first factor to determine the flow is volume of blood. How much blood is present in the veins? The second factor is the increased large vessel tone. Now the tone in the veins, in the large veins or large vessels, is the second factor which is going to determine the central uh, the flow of the blood towards the right atrium and then this flow is going to determine the central venous pressure. So the tone increases or decreases in a lot of ways like sympathetic stimulation can increase the tone. When the tone of the veins increases they constrict and they push the blood towards the right atrium. So the flow of the blood towards the right atrium increases and then dilatation of the arterioles dilatation of the arterioles these factors basically increase blood volume increase large vessel tone and dilatation of the arterioles they are going basically going to increase the flow 
when the arterioles dilate suppose for example we have a an arteriole it is like this if this arteriole dilate it is going to allow more blood initially it's like this and then it dilates like this so this dilated arteriole is going to allow more blood to flow so the tendency of the blood to flow will increase so increasing the volume increasing the tone of the vessels and dilatation of the arterioles will basically increase the tendency of the blood to flow towards the right atrium similarly decrease in blood volume decrease in tone and decrease in our dilatation of the arterioles or the constriction of the arteriole is going to decrease it's going to decrease the blood flow towards the right atrium so to summarize the central venous pressure is the pressure in the right atrium it is basically regulated by two factors the pumping of the heart the ability of the heart to pump the blood and the tendency of the blood to flow now the blood flow will increase or decrease with the blood volume tone of the vessels and dilatation or constriction of the arterioles now factors that regulate the central venous pressure also regulate the cardiac output if the pumping of the heart increase if the pumping of the heart increase not only will the cvp basically the central venous pressure falls but the cardiac output will also increase and if the flow of blood towards the heart increase not only will it maintain the central venous pressure it will also increase the cardiac output cardiac output basically cardiac output is the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart in one minute so more the blood coming towards the heart more will be their pumping so more the flow more will be the cardiac output so the factors that regulate the central venous pressure they also regulate the cardiac output it's very much important now if the pumping mechanism of the heart fails if the pumping of the heart fails then blood will be coming here blood heart will not be able to pump the blood so the cvp will increase and if the pumping fails the cvp will increase the pressure will increase because blood will be coming but the heart will not be able to pump but if the heart is pumping vigorously it is pumping in a very if it is pumping uh, very strongly then the central venous pressure the cvp is going to fall because more blood will be uh, going out of the heart so there will be tendency for the blood to come in so factors affecting the central venous pressure will also affect the cardiac output now the normal value of the central venous pressure is 0 mm of mercury cvp is zero normally but it can increase it can increase to around 20 or 30 mm of mercury in heart failure and massive blood transfusion now normally the value will be zero but if the heart is unable to pump then the cvp is going to increase around 20 or 30 mm of mercury this because we discussed that the cvp is determined by the pumping and the flowing so one factor which is going to increase the cvp is the heart failure and the second thing is the massive transfusion because when we are transfusing a lot of blood here we are transfusing a lot of blood into the human body it is going to increase the blood volume when the volume increases the flow of the blood towards the right atrium is going to increase which is also going to increase the cvp or the central venous pressure so normally it's zero but it will increase to 20 or 30 mm of mercury in heart failure or massive blood transfusion if a lot of volume of blood is injected inside the human body then the cvp can also decrease to around minus 3 or minus 5 if the heart is pumping vigorously or there is decreased flow or the flow is decreased due to blood loss 
now this sentence basically explain the purpose and the of the CVP and its clinical significance now see that the CVP normally is zero it's normally is zero but it's determined by the pumping of the heart and the blood flowing towards the heart so if the heart fails to pump blood will be coming but the heart will not be able to pump so the CVP is going to increase similarly if the heart is able to pump but the amount of blood that is in the veins the volume of blood is increased the flow is going to increase that is also going to increase the CVP but if the heart start pumping vigorously it contracts more strongly it is going to pump all the blood it is going to bring down the CVP to minus 3 or minus 5 similarly if the blood is going outside the human body like hemorrhage there is blood loss then it is also going to decrease the CVP to around minus 3 and minus 5 so basically CVP or central venous pressure it's very much important it's measured mm, very often in the wards uh, almost all critical patients are uh, having a CVP or central venous pressure and it helps in the monitoring of the central venous pressure and it gives a lot of information to the uh, doctors uh, and accordingly they can take some steps uh, to to correct the any pathology that is increasing or decreasing the CVP so this to summarize the central venous pressure it's basically the pressure in the right atrial right atrium of the heart because all the blood from the systemic veins is returning to the right atrium that's why it's called the right atrial pressure and it is regulated by the pumping of the heart and the blood flowing towards the heart now the blood flow towards the heart is basically affected by the volume of the blood the tone of the blood vessels and dilatation of the arterioles or constriction of the arteri arterioles volume tone and dilatation or constriction of the arterioles now the factors that regulate the central venous pressure they also regulate the cardiac output because cardiac output is nothing but it is pumping of all the blood that is returning to the heart so if there is any factor which increase or decrease the CVP it is also going to affect the cardiac output normally the CVP is zero but it can increase or decrease it can increase due to failure of the heart or massive transfusion but it can decrease due to vigorous pumping of the heart or decrease flow of the blood towards the right atrium so that's all about the central venous pressure thanks a lot for watching the video